Julian, this feels kind of weird in a 9-7 game with no Panthers touchdowns, but I have no complaints and no notes. How do you feel about the Panthers' second win of the season? Well, Nick, I feel like you always have to feel good about a win here in Carolina, especially since they're few and far between as the Panthers improved to 2-12 and 12 on the season. But I felt like this was an overall team win for Carolina. They ran the ball effectively for the third week in a row, going for over 130 yards on the ground. Bryce Young completed 75% of his passes in a pretty, not a torrential downpour, but it was coming down pretty consistently throughout the afternoon and evening here in Charlotte today. And to have success through the air, especially on that final drive, that's something that should be comfortable the fans to see Bryce Young for the second time this season have a game-winning drive special teams of course at the three field goals including a game-winning field goal by Eddie Pinheiro after a week ago down in New Orleans it was a complete disaster so on defense on offense on special teams I felt like this team came together put together a solid team performance even though in a 9-7 win which leads to the funniest stat of the afternoon to me <laughs> Thomas Brown has now been the play caller for six Carolina Panthers games <laughs> and they have scored five total touchdowns in three of those games including this afternoon in a win against Atlanta they have not scored a touchdown at all but it comes in a winning effort so everyone should be happy about that yeah just put those on the resume leave everything else out just just uh, post those okay Bryce Young let's talk about that especially that final drive what gives you the most hope after you see him orchestrate that his second game winning drive of the year I know that the wins haven't been pretty but that's pretty impressive for a kid uh, a rookie to have two game winning drives in one in his first season oh absolutely and things have not gone as planned for Bryce Young this season had they Frank Reich would still be here in Carolina as the head coach. Obviously, that's not the case and has not been the case the last three games. But to see Bryce Young do something that, quite honestly, Teddy Bridgewater could not do here in Carolina in 2020. Sam Darnold couldn't do it until his final game a year ago in Week 18 against the Saints. And Baker Mayfield was unable to do it. Three guys that David Tepper, Scott Fitter, Matt Rule, the former head coach here in Carolina, and many in that building hoped would be the long-term answer could not do what Bryce Young has now done not once but twice in Carolina it would be nice too if the Panthers could find a way to win these games without needing a walk-off field goal that's three straight Panther wins where they needed to kick a field goal as time expired to win those games but to see Bryce Young calm and cool and collective able to make those throws to Jonathan Mingo DJ Chark an outstanding catch yeah. on that final drive having commanded Mark Slareth on the Fox broadcast, talk about it. That's the first time that he's seen Bryce Young. I'm not sure how much he's watched Bryce Young, but I kind of agreed with him. It's really the first time this season, maybe the few times this season you've seen Bryce Young look in control, look confident, and for him to go down there, lead that drive for the second time in those conditions, having to throw the football on some of those downs, I think that's very encouraging for a guy that has had his struggles this season because of his own limitations. Also, the offensive line struggles with their with injuries and the regression from that unit, the wide receivers issues as well, and not having a consistent run game. To now have two game-winning drives, that's absolutely a positive that the Carolina Panthers can carry with them into the offseason as they try to build around Bryce Young. And speaking of that, let's talk about some of the receiving core that we think will be here next year. Certainly Jonathan Mingo and then Amir Smith-Marset, yeah. who they used in a, a variety of ways. I mean, he's a return specialist, but then they used him in the pass game and the run game. I think he earned his way uh, into camp next year as well. What do you think of those two guys and how they could fit onto this roster next season? Well, Mingo's the guy I, I would want to focus on the most because he was a second-round pick, and it will be interesting to see what David Tepper decides to do with Scott Fitter, whether he's going to be general manager here in Carolina or not. But that's the second wide receiver he's taken in the second round. Terrace Marshall Jr. was a healthy scratch the fifth week in a row, so it feels like his time in Carolina is coming to an end, whether Scott Fitter is here or not. But Jonathan Mingo... He started to pick up the slack the last couple of weeks. Adam Thielen, he saw more double teams over the last couple of weeks as he has been really the only consistent receiving threat throughout the season. But I thought Mingo made some solid plays this week. He has over the last couple of weeks as he continues to learn and grow with Bryce Young. It will be interesting to see, too, with Amir Smith-Marset. He's been more of a special team or a return guy who could have had a costly muff in this game, had the ball not right bounce right back to him. But I did like what Thomas Brown was able to do with him on those jet sweeps, and they were led to a couple of first downs, got a couple of chunk plays there and that's positive Four carries for 31 yards getting him more involved in the offense I don't know what his future is going to be in Carolina outside of possibly being the return man next year uh, but it's good to see in the final three weeks of the season what they may be able to do with him and what kind of future he could carve out here in Carolina or possibly elsewhere in the NFL all right, so this defense, we've got to talk about them. I mean, they held Atlanta's rushing attack yeah. to 52 yards. Cordero Patterson, Algier, uh, Bijan Robinson. I mean, these are three really good guys that run the football for them. 
how important, like, what's the balance for the next general manager or Scott Fitter this offseason to trying to keep this defensive unit together because it makes for half of a good team, but also some of these guys are going to be some enticing potential trade pieces as well. Well, absolutely. Now, probably your best defensive player, at least this season, he's been your best defensive player, Derek Brown. He's under contract for next season, playing on that fifth-year option that he has absolutely earned. And whether it's Scott Bitter or another general manager coming in, they should learn a lesson about what's gone on so far with the negotiations with Brian Burns. Not quite sure what his future will be. Now, the Carolina Panthers can, of course, use a franchise tag to keep him here next season and give them some time to negotiate a new extension for Brian Burns if that's what they want to do. But with Derek Brown, if he goes out there, has a Pro Bowl year this year, which it looks like he should be a Pro Bowl, or he falls it up again next season, the price is only going to go up. If the Carolina Panthers are smart, with some cap room, knowing that that's somebody that needs to be a part of your future, you just don't find Derrick Browns out there every year in the draft. You need to be able, especially for a team that does not have a first-round draft pick, you're going to want to lock up Derrick Brown. It would make sense to me for the Carolina Panthers to try and make that happen this offseason before the price goes up to the point where they're sitting there with him on the fifth-year option, not having a deal done like with Brian Burns. And we'll see what they decide to do with Brian Burns. I still feel like Brian Burns is a player that the Carolina Panthers should want around. He's still young. He's been an excellent pass rusher. He will not be a pro bowler this season. We understand he has not had the year that many fans would have hoped, especially for a guy who stayed to hold in heading into that week one matchup down in Atlanta, which was probably his best se game of the season. And that's not ideal, but the Carolina Panthers don't have any other edge rusher prospects out there that you think coming to next season would really help them. DJ Johnson, I've not seen enough of him as a rookie so far this season. Justin Houston, who's missed now, I think seven games so far this season, has a grand total of a half a sack so far for Carolina. Brian Burns remains their lone edge rushing presence that you consist com mainly, not consistently this year, but for the most part, you can project as being a consistent uh, product, uh, producer for the Carolina Panthers on defense. You want him, J.C. Horn's back uh, on the final e year of his rookie deal, assuming the Carolina Panthers don't pick up his fifth-year option, which I don't think they're going to do. Frankie Luba is somebody that they would want to keep around, and he's been outstanding playing at the off-ball linebacker spot with Shaq Thompson out. I, I think the Carolina Panthers – Need to keep Derek Brown. Need to find a way to retain Brian Burns. If it's a franchise tag, so be it. If it's if it's an extension, that works for me as well. J.C. Horn's back next year. Uh, this is a, a pretty good foundation there. Now, it looks like Jeremy Chin. I, I'm curious to see if a new defensive staff would have them in their plans. For whatever reason, he's not really factored into Jero Rivera's plans. Uh, but I, I think this is the defense that you want to you stick with. They give you a chance to win week in and week out. I don't think it's smart to get rid of some key defensive players in the hopes that an offensive player can come in here and help your team when help Bryce Young, especially if it means that the defense is only going to get worse because this offense still has a long way to go, in my opinion. We don't even have to complain about draft position unless it's, you know, second we'll round that. pick we're worried about. Comfort and joy after a win, Julian. Uh, we'll, we'll see if they can do it next week. Happy holidays. Happy holidays to you and to Charlotte. <laughs>